What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Robbie Lafier and today I just wanted to do a quick video about bladed jigs. Uh, just kind of go over what rod reel line setup I throw them on in just different sizes, colors, and just what trailers I use and when. So stay tuned, it's all coming up. Thanks for watching. I just want to go over my rod reel and line setup uh, this is a very important key to when you're throwing a chatterbait uh, surprisingly a chatterbait does not have a very good hookup ratio so you can actually help that by throwing it on the right rod putting it on the right line and reel uh, you know in my opinion it helps out a lot um, so to start off uh, the rod I like a 7.3 medium heavy moderate fast action rod um, the moderate action is very key uh, when throwing a chatterbait because you want that fish to be able to take the bait and you want your rod to load up. Um, and it just, throwing it on a moderate action rod is, uh, will just help your hookup ratio out a ton. Um, gear ratio in my reel, this is a 7 3 to 1 gear ratio reel. I like a, a little bit faster uh, gear ratio reel. I know some guys like throwing it on a 6 4 to 1, but uh, I'm a 7 3 to 1 guy because I like when that fish bites and I'm throwing it on a very parabolic rod. I like being able to reel up to him quick and almost catch up to that fish. Um, and then line setup. Uh, I will throw my chatter baits either on 15 or 20 pound line. I will throw it on 20 if I'm fishing it four foot or shallower just to keep that bait up. And if I'm fishing anything deeper than four or five foot in there, I will throw it on 15 because that'll keep the bait down. Again, 20 pound line compared to 15 has a bigger diameter, which is um, the area around the line. So the line is thicker. So that creates more drag and in turn will keep your bait higher in the water column. Now I just want to go over different colors that I use and when I use those. So I keep things pretty simple for chatterbaits. I would throw four different colors. Um, I throw a green pumpkin with a uh, painted blade. I throw a green pumpkin with a gold blade a black and blue and I throw a white with a chrome or silver blade uh, so now I'll just go over why I throw these colors um, again it's hard to beat a white and silver blade if they your lakes have any kind of shad or bait fish to them uh, here in Michigan especially in our little inland lakes our local lakes around here we don't have shad we don't have alewife in many of them um, so I typically don't throw this a lot here in Michigan, but again, on our Great Lakes, we do have shad. Um, but if I go anywhere else where there is shad present, I pretty much stick to this. It is hard to be, uh, white. Um, next, black and blue. I throw black and blue in dirty water. Foot and a half foot, uh, visibility or less. Um, again, big key to me is a black blade on my black and blue. Uh, bladed jigs because black there's there's just more of a silhouette uh, looks more natural in dirty water there's not too many things that have shine to them in dirty water so I just I'd rather have the silhouette than the shine in dirty water um, and again black and blue ever you guys know that black and blue and dirty water works good um, now for my two green pumpkins um, I have a green pumpkin with a black or green pumpkin green pumpkin blade and then a green pumpkin with a um, you know bronze or shiny blade and I throw these on two separate occasions both in you know clear water or water with good visibility um, I throw the painted blade or the black blade in overcast situations and then in sunny situations especially if it's sunny and windy I will throw a chrome or a uh, bronze blade 
Uh, just there's not many things in our Michigan lakes that have any shine or flash to them unless the sun's out. So just if you throw a bladed jig with a painted blade when the sun is um, not out and it's overcast, it just looks a lot more natural. Uh, and it's just, it's not as aggressive. It's more subtle for those fish. And I just, it seems like I get a lot more bites on a painted blade uh, in overcast situations. Now I'll go into my trailers, just kind of what I, like to throw and when. Start out, I see one big mistake uh, guys use chatterbait fishing and is that throwing any kind of boot tail swim bait or swim bait on the back of their bladed jigs. Um, that is a big mistake in my opinion and I'll tell you guys the reason why. Uh, a chatterbait has so much vibration and displaces so much water that actually with a boot tail um, swim bait on the back the water displacement messes with the tail and the tail doesn't get any good kick to it. And you'll notice if you throw this on the back of your chatterbait a lot that, you know, the chatterbait itself has a lot of action, but the boot tail can uh, just have a really dull action and it doesn't look good. It doesn't look natural in my opinion. Um, so I tend to stay away from uh, any kind of boot tail swim baits when I throw a bladed jig. And that's just, that's a mistake that I see when I taking guys fishing or you know whatever see guys that I just and this is just my personal preference that a um, boot tail swim bait just does not work good on the back of a chatterbait so I keep things very simple again when I put in putting a uh, trailer on the back of my bladed jigs I will either throw the Yamamoto Zeko or a Strike King Rage Menace or Menace type trailer on the back um, I throw the Zayco if I'm trying to keep the bait down. So typically if I'm fishing four foot or deeper, I will throw the Zayco because the Zayco uh, is your more typical chatterbait style trailer uh, just with a flat tail to it. So it has almost zero resistance on the back of your um, chatterbait. So it's not gonna cause your bait to rise any. I will throw the Menace uh, trailer on or for two different scenarios. Um, one is if I'm trying to keep my bait higher in the water column or shallow. Um, again, this bait with the two appendages on both sides has a lot of resistance or more resistance than the Zacco itself. Um, so that will keep your bait higher. With the more uh, resistance in the water, more drag, it'll cause that chatterbait to rise. So if I'm trying to keep it out of the weeds or fishing it shallow, I will throw a craw or a menace type trailer on the back and then another good tip for you guys to keep in consideration is the chatterbait is known for being terrible around wood or any kind of hard cover and it is it's not the best uh, bait to throw around any type of wood or hard cover it gets snagged up a lot but one thing I do to um, help that or get less snags I, I guess you should say is I will throw this menace on the back and what that does is it having two appendages on both sides of the hook it keels that bait out quicker um, so to explain this the chatterbait has a lot of roll to it um, so it tends to get snagged a lot because it'll deflect off cover and turn sideways and that's what will get hooked uh, in the wood and that's what in turn um, you know is, is why it gets snagged so much so if you put a craw type trailer or a menace type trailer with two appendages on both sides of the hook it keels that bait out quicker so it'll instead of it rolling so much or when it deflects off something instead of it hanging down for I don't know a second it might only hang down for a half a second and that hook will become upright a lot quicker if you throw a trailer with two appendages on both sides of the hook um, so yeah again for colors on my trailers, I'll stick to something green pumpkin on the back of my green pumpkin chatterbaits, black and blue on the back of uh, my black and blue, and I will throw a white on the back of the white. Keep it super simple, super easy. Um, and then last but not least, just to go over here is just um, sizes in my chatterbaits. I will throw a half ounce and a three eighths ounce. I never go 
any lighter I will go a little heavier but that's uh, something a little sneaky that I do that we'll make another separate video on um, something just a little different that I don't think the fish see a lot um, but yeah 95% of the time nine you know 95% of the time I will throw three eighths or a half ounce and what I do is just um, three eighths four or five foot or shallower half ounce anything deeper than you know your your five foot just to keep it down better um but yeah that's that's about it that's all you know pretty much everything i've got for for chatter baits so um now we're just gonna put one on our hand and see if we can't catch a couple fish for you guys so thanks for watching